Sasha Mai is a half Vietnamese and half European young woman from California in the United States and currently living in Ho Chi Minh City. She is both a master of business management working in a dynamic and busy enterprise and a singer known for beautiful Vietnamese ballads. Don't forget about you, I Sasha has appeared as a guest in previous episodes of the Vietnam Discovery Show. She visited Đông Tha province and had so much fun enjoying local life. Now, let's meet Sasha again and see what her next destination is. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Vietnam Discovery. Here I am in Vinh Long province along the Cochin River. You might think this place is just like any other typical countryside area. However, we are going to dig deeper and see what kind of hidden treasures we can uncover. Nested in the city of Vinh Long, a special house has recently received much attention from locals and tourists. First of all, it is the red color of the entire house that really stands out in the neighborhood. Secondly, when you come closer, you may be surprised as almost every detail of the house is made of ceramic. I was lucky to meet with Mr. Nguyen Van Bui the 62-year-old owner of this special house. Long chú muốn xây dựng một cái ngôi nhà gốm để mang cái đậm nét của tỉnh Vinh Long để giữ lại để con cháu mình có thể là nó chiêm ngưỡng được những cái tác phẩm của một cái làng nghề để lại trên dòng sông này á nếu mình đi thiền á thì mình có thể thấy, thấy toàn cảnh của cái cái lò gốm của cái dòng sông Cổ Chiên The highest concentration of brick kilns is where the Cochin River separates from the Tian River, down 30 kilometers to the Mang Tit River. The area has over 1,000 pottery baking kilns and is the busiest part of the so-called Red Kingdom of Vinh Long. I recommend that those who want to hunt down the kilns go by boats for the most scenic view. There are guided tours offered every day by local tourist agencies for visitors to choose from. However, I was lucky to be introduced to Ms. Ngo Anh Dao, a landscape architect from Hanoi. She has a special plan for the area and hopefully she can share with me. So here I am in Vinh Long province on the Cochin River with Ms. Dao. And we are here to explore more about a place called Mang Thiet. So what do you know about this area? It's right by, um, by chance or by opportunity. One friend of mine, she uh, took the photo and sent it to me. I asked her right away, where are you now? She's uh, like uh, a light in the uh, uh, wonders uh, world. Mm -hmm. And uh, she said that, no, I'm here in Vietnam, in Mekong Delta. <laughs> 
couldn't believe that. It's just a sort of thousand, thousand brick killed. Uh, wow. It's like a, yeah, it's, it's like a dream. I'm that, surprised I've never heard of it before. Yeah. It made me a uh, feeling that I, I came to see uh, Bagan in mm. Myanmar. Exactly, I'm thinking yeah, of that. Such kind of re re religious uh, architecture. Mm. And the side itself is the, the pattern of, of the side is like the knees. <laughs> mm. So this side is combined of both architecture and, and landscape. In its heyday, Bricks and red pottery made in Mang Thit were exported all over the world. Since the 2000s, due to high production costs and new consumer habits, the trade has gone down. A lot of kilns have been demolished or stopped operating. However, favored by both domestic and international tourists who have successfully reached this place, Mang Thit is expected to change in the future. But also is a uh, cultural heritage mm -hmm. from the Khmer and uh, Chinese, uh, Vietnamese, yeah, that they come from. I see. Yeah. It's very special. At the beginning, when I saw uh, the interior of a uh, kiln, uh, I have an imagination in my mind uh, a baby in uh, the belly of a uh, mother. Yes. So the energy, the flow of energy from the, the gate of till the top is a really uh, sits in, in a baby in, in a, the belly of a mom. And even the warehouse system inside, uh, we can convert it into a very uh, restaurant, uh, yeah, restaurant, bar, or uh, exhibition center. I want to preserve uh, the whole side, like <laughs> 2,000, 2000 uh, bills over there. Wow. So how long do you think your plan would take to convert these uh, kilns? Depending on the dynamic of local people here, right? And the, the dynamic of, um, I don't know, investor. But at least we should uh, do something as pilot project. With Ms. Dao's instructions, I find myself in some small-scale brick-making factories nearby. Over a century ago, Vinlong people made traditional building materials such as tablet bricks, floor tile bricks, and yin yang roof tiles for houses, temples, and pagodas. Vinlong pottery makers' success is due to their perfect baking techniques and their baking fuel, rice husk. No idea how they can separate all the rice from all of the sh rice shells that they use to make the bricks because it looks like so small. It's really nice to learn about all the ways the Vietnamese people can use different things that I've never even thought of. เอ่อโกไอเซลเลวยังกระทั่งในครับของคนชายนะเลวนะเลวเลยนะเยอะโหดองแกลอยลอยย้ายโยลอใดก็ยังนะนะนะนะนะนะนะนะนะนะนะน
Ừ. Còn ở dưới này thì chìm gạch lên. Hồi xưa thì làm thì đông. Ừ. Bây giờ thì có số nó cũng nghỉ bớt. It is not difficult to find abandoned kilns in this neighborhood. Many of them cannot be operated. Chú, tại sao lò này còn con mình vắt nữa? Thì có cái thời gian nó xây hồi năm 1990. Cái tuổi nó thì nó lâu, nó hơi cũ mình phải sửa lại. Khi sửa lại nhưng gạch này sẽ làm gì? Cái này cái là gạch dụng. Sau khi mình sửa lò cũng được, hay là mình để khi sang lấp cái chỗ nào cũng được. À. à. So here is one of the final bricks that was made here in this kiln, and uh, it's now part of history because as you can see here we have his company name that already stopped operations but it still exists here in these bricks and uh, makes this whole scene very special chú có hai lò hả cái này là là cái sản xuất nó còn bình thường wow this is amazing. It reminds me of an Indiana Jones film. Wow. So, cái này vẫn có thể hoạt động đúng không? Từ mặt nền này lên là nó khoảng 9 mét chín. Wow, I could live here. Seriously, it's like a house. It's uh, hard to believe that this is used to produce bricks. In 1980, a German company came to Binh Nung to make pottery for export, while local kiln owners sent people to Binh Dung and Binh Hoa to learn about modern pottery. Since then, the pottery making technique at Binh Nung has become similar to that of other places, but their products are completely different. So unlike generations ago, when the people of Vinh Lom were only making red bricks from the clay, uh, they now produce several other kinds of items for decoration. Even without enamel, you can make some beautiful products that are the same red-orange color and more detailed. And uh, it's really nice to be able to experience this. I visit one of the largest factories in town to check how things are done. Unlike other pottery or ceramic products, Bin Lom Terracotta is not kneaded but pressed in ready-made molds. Each product is usually made of several parts which can be printed individually. Wow! <laughs> it's a lot of pressure he has to add to be able to press this clay down into the mold, so I'm very impressed.
Okay. This is a very fun activity actually, uh, but I know for him it's hard work because he makes over a hundred a day, maybe even two hundred. Bức cuối cùng trước uh, cho thanh màu đó không? Đó. À, sau khi ở đây sẽ, sẽ là màu đó. Oh, ok. Chú uh, làm việc này bao lâu rồi? 10 năm rồi. 10 năm. Phải ở đây bao lâu? Một ngày bảo là tất chiều tại đây. Có nắng không? Nắng lắm. I feel like it's a sauna. <cười> Coming out of the kiln now, it's hot and uh, it's very hard work. Uh, they not only have to work in a hot environment, uh, kind of warm, but after a while it's kind of tiring. So I really respect and admire their, um, their hard work. Then comes the baking. During the first four days, the temperature in the kiln is kept at 100 to 200 degrees Celsius. After that, the temperature is gradually increased to finally reach 900 degrees Celsius on the last day. At last, the kiln worker removes the fire, cocks the kiln openings with clay, and leaves it to cool down until it can be opened. So after about six days in the kiln, then the products are done. They turn an orangish reddish color and they're hardened after which the workers will come and unstack them and then stack them in the warehouse ready for export. This is not only a factory, but it's a very lively place. Uh, there's even kids here because of summer break and all of the family members uh, work in this factory. So um, it feels kind of like lively, not so, uh, not so boring. And uh, I even hear a rooster. Everyone we encountered was very friendly. Honestly, visiting them makes for a unique and rewarding excursion. Okay, come on, chị. 
So now I'm here after walking through some items that they are making for export. I see many different things from flower pots to statues to small decorative items to dishes. And uh, Miss Fung is so nice to be able to share with me how to try to make one of these birds. Uh, bước đầu tiên là gì? Đầu tiên là mình lấy cục đất mình bỏ vô cái khuôn. Ah. Chị dò cho nó tròn tròn là gì nè. Nó hơi gì nè. Chị dò lên đi. Like this? Ooh, it's kind of sticky. Cái mình nhét vô đây. Okay. Nhét, nhét vô theo cái chiều dài như thế này hả? Okay. Rồi mình đè nó xuống. Nếu mình đồng mình đỏ tóc thu thêm. Mình bồi lên cho nó đầy. Ừ. gì là cái mình ấp con chim lên mình ấp theo cái cái độ của nó là mạnh hơn cái đường vùng lên đè áp lực đè cho nó bằng cái khuôn này phải thêm nhiều áp lực đúng không? Dạ. Wow cái này là bị đau không? Đau chứ. Chị làm cái này bao lâu rồi? Dạ, cũng được mười mấy năm rồi Wow, chuyên nghiệp oh. Phải làm lại đúng không chị? Dạ không, không sao oh. Sau khi làm cái này phải chờ bao lâu trước đi đi uh, còn nông? Dạ, nếu mà liền đó là khoảng chừng uh, 3-4 ngày à ừ. Mà nếu mà thời gian không gấp đó, thì có thể là tuần Chừng nào có lò vô rồi mới vô à. dạ. Chị cầm lên gì nè cầm cái nó lên okay. đó. Uh. Như vậy đã xong chưa? Sắp Được xong. Rồi. Sắp đẹp. Mình lấy cái đồ á mình cạo cái này nè. Cho nó láng rồi cái mình tỉa cái lông đuôi nó như như mấy con này vậy nè. Mình hoàn thành một con gì là là một ngàn Trông của chị uh, cũng làm ở đây không? Dạ, làm ảnh đứng nãy đây nè Mà tại ảnh mắc cỡ anh đưa tiêu rồi <cười> À, mắc cỡ hả? <cười> uh, the process is pretty simple and easy but I feel like it takes a while to get used to to working around the details with their hands So it's pretty fun as well. It reminds me of my childhood because kids love to play with clay and such. The brick kiln village at Mang Tid is worth the title Red Kingdom of Vin Mo. The area has an interesting history, beautiful scenery, and friendly people, which enable it to become a major tourist attraction. I hope more visitors will come to Vin Lom to have a chance to uncover the hidden treasure of the brick land. This will help preserve the unique landscape and bring a new livelihood for local people as well.